So, hello, Andrew Stewart. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Laura, and Haggis too. It's lovely and to see your pretty face, and Laura, you're looking good too. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm buzzing to be joined by Andrew today because Andrew is a um, owner of Metro Laser Clinic, who is a partner of the GGC and is running all sorts of fantastic offers exclusive for our members um, and our Diamond members as well. So we are on today. This podcast is being recorded for the GGC magazine, um, which is a focus on health and well-being, but it's also going to be pushed out to the community. So it's going to be a right good chat on all things laser hair removal. Tell us about Ma Metro Laser, how it came to be, how you came to be in the profession and having the business that you do. Um, we've been around for about five years now. Um, initially, we it was just me and a nurse um both male <laughs> so it was quite we used Groupon at first actually um just as a, a vehicle to launch because we were starting out from scratch with no network uh nobody really knew who we were um and it takes time as you know just to get traffic through word of mouth and so my initial plan was right let's go on Groupon and build up a following and then obviously massive losses at first because the laser in itself is a really expensive bit of kit um, and then slowly through time we came away from that because um, it's very unusual to actually get a laser that uh, advertises on Groupon most of it tends to be pulsed light so the laser in itself you're probably between 30 and 40 grand plus for a good laser um, whereas an IPL unit, not that doesn't have its place, because I do like IPL, I started with IPL, um, the results just aren't there. Plus, on a skin safety point of view, Laura, it's the, the ND YAG, which I'll talk you through, it's quite boring actually, but ND YAG's nearly invisible. So, if you imagine a rainbow, mm -hmm. um, you've got white light somewhere. I keep forgetting I've got this screen. I was going to point to a light there, but uh, <laughs> you've got white light, which is a spectrum of all lights. It's the whole rainbow of light. So when you put that on the skin, you're relying on the energy being transmitted down through the follicle. Mm -hmm. It stops about there. And then it's relying on the light energy going down to there where it nukes the little connection. And over time, it just disconnects it, it just cuts it off. Um, but NDIAG literally passes, it's the deepest penetration, it's a medical grade one, it passes safely right through the epidermis um, to the bottom layer where the actual hair is attached to the blood supply. So that's the boring science bit. Wow, it's, it's not boring at all, it's really interesting. <laughs> I'm a bit of a laser geek. <laughs> no, I love it. What does it do at that point, Andrew? See how you're saying it goes down to the lowest level where the hair follicle yeah. is attached. What does it do so at that point? on the follicle itself, to show you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. So on the follicle itself, there are little connections. So you've got a blood supply. So a laser um, basically passes down and surrounding the follicle itself is a little sheath. And that's where all the nutrients come. That's what makes it alive. Further up, you've got nerves and little sebaceous glands that, um, and a little muscle that as well. You know how when you get chilly, it, you, you get um, your hair standing end? Yeah. So there's, there's a little muscle just about there which causes little pimples. So that's why when Interesting. You they come from your goosebump comes from a hair follicle. So that's our body's way of keeping us warm. Okay. So that's what you predominantly see. So the laser passes right the way down to about there. And it basically just um, cuts off the supply. Uh, the right energy, that supply, um, it's almost like um, a plumber sort of just snipping off the blood supply. So it's a really natural thing to do. The body does it itself naturally too. Um, but what you're relying on is a good penetration right the way down to stop that supply. And then that hair there's in what they call an anagen phase, which is when the hair is actually in growth phase. So the hair on 
your head. I can never get my lefts and my rights. Um, <laughs> these hairs um, stay in the growth phase for up to those years because that's why you can have that's why you don't have armpits you know like your hair because you know otherwise you'd be all walking around the bookie do you know i've always wondered that i've <laughs> always wondered why some hair like why can this be this length yeah and hair elsewhere only grows a set length yeah so they all grow and stay in that growth phase so when they're in that growth phase there they're basically just pumping out it's it's keratin it's basically the same material that your your nails are made of and uh, a lot of other um, things in your skin surface. And it just keeps pumping out, which means that you can have l luscious long locks. But the minute that it kind of leaves the epidermis, the hair is actually dead. So your hair is actually only really alive at the point of connection with the skin. So the rest of it, which is why so many products look to, you know, that one where you see it and it's like kerastase or something and it shows you all the little things coming together and it makes the, the hair whole again and it nourishes it. Yes, yes. Essentially your hair becomes split and frazzled uh, at the end. So so that's essentially why like your hair and your different parts of your body all grow at different rates. So the likes of underarm hair, that isn't actually a hairy ear. We were just joking, that's not my ear hair. <laughs> um, the hair in your underarm, your bikini, um, um, normally grow in about a four week cycle. So what happens is it'll move through this anagen phase. Whoa. <laughs> I will get to the hang of this. Uh, it moves through the anagen phase and then it disconnects naturally. So what yeah. happens is that will keep growing out and the bottom bit then starts to regenerate the next follicle. So it then pushes out the old hair and it's replaced by a new one. So when you lose a hair, the hair is gone. So that underarm here you see there is a different underarm here than you would maybe necessarily have had last year. So it's totally replaced. Whereas the one in your head stays there for years, which is why you can get away with colouring it. And you'd normally lose about 50 to 100 follicles from your head every day without even... Okay. Um, that is like a, been a real education already, yeah. I have to say. <laughs> Things, so what we, what the skill in someone that's good at doing laser is working with um, the individual client. So if, for example, we've got somebody that's coming in that we'll ask how often they would shave and how quickly they expect to see the hair coming back. So if they've got a particularly slow growth rate, me telling them to come in prescriptively every four weeks is essentially giving me maybe an extra three treatments in a year that they don't really need. So it's money down the drain. They don't need those treatments. Mm -hmm. Getting that balance between the fine line of getting them in often enough to achieve yep. results and not bringing them in so that we're just fleecing them. And that's one thing I've always been dead set against is mm -hmm. that we provide a transparent and a fair service so that we are looking to get the best results through word of mouth that soon gets out people know that we're not there just to say right four weeks time you must come it's not always the case mm -hmm. so for example a full body session we would maybe do the first session in a one -y mm -hmm. or split it up and lower and then how long would that take andrew like can take up to two and a half hours. Okay. Um, it's, you know, quite a, I mean, I often jest to people um, that, you know, you're going to be able to sit on your phone and, you know, the time will pass, but see the time two and a half hours gone, you've had a good old blether, you know, and Laura's <laughs> great. Laura is so good with the clients as well. So the two of us will talk about a whole lot of things. Other clients, We'll come in and listen to music or watch a movie or watch friends or, you know, put the headphones in. So it, it all goes differently. And we guide you. So you basically just lie there and let us go on with it. And we'll occasionally move you around to different ways just to get into the, the creases and things like that. Um, yes. So, yeah, it's between half hours. So what we then do is we would then split it up. So we wouldn't tell you to come back in six weeks to have another session because by then your facial hair and your bikini and your underarm are way out of sync. They needed a treatment. 
two weeks before. Mm-hmm. So we'll then tell you, right, your next session, come in in four weeks and we'll do your faster growing areas and things like um, forearms or toes, hairy toes. So many women say, I've got, don't tell him they have got hairy toes. I was like, I know you've got a hairy toe. Now, how did you know <laughs> hairy toe I said I've been doing this for years of course you've got a hairy toe I can see the follicles but my, my husband or my boyfriend thinks I'm a, a yeti I'm a freak no you're not we've all got hair in our toes you know I know that's it we've all got hair everywhere don't we it's just some people have got black some people have got blonde yeah. and that's something to mention as well because it, yes. laser only works on certain hair follicles is that right so hair. when you are about Oh, 22 weeks in your mum's tum. So essentially, you have every follicle that you're going to have for life. So you, all your potential follicles are created before you're born. So wow. every little one is laid down um, in the unborn baby. And after that, they don't become activated until hormonal changes at puberty. Okay. Um, or sometimes like my daughter come out look she's going to kill me she, she looked like a monkey she'd like she'd like the hairiest face i honestly thought it was like et that was coming in. oh god she will kill you when she hears that she, she was like a wee yoda she was like baby yoda oh and she's a hairy back she still get hairy no she's not uh, <laughs> She, she did a really hear me back, but that falls away. That's quite normal. Um, you will hear midwives talking quite a lot about it, but it normally falls out in a few weeks. Um, what they will have normally activated um, naturally will be their head hair and their okay. um, eyelashes and eyebrows. So they, they sort of progress differently. Um, so your question about tight. So unfortunately, those poor redheads out there there's no laser or light system that will target red hair or like um, particularly powdery blonde hair. And that's because the laser itself is relying on heating up the part of the bulb, getting enough energy in, and it just simply can't see. It simply just won't it'll pass through really blonde or white or gray hairs. It just won't. Over the years, there's been a whole lot of systems that I remember one just after, I mean, laser's only really been around since the 90s, believe it or not. I started with IPL. We thought it was amazing. And then a year later, everybody's hair grew back because the machines at the time looked a bit like a hoover. You know, it was not a to- there's no, you no chance of getting rid of hair. There just wasn't the power that, that are there. Um, so yeah, so redheads, um white hair um later on obviously during menopause they start going white as well uh guys tend to get it across their chest um and powdery blonde hair is really difficult so i mean they did have this thing that they painted you with this carbon stuff and it was meant to pass into the follicle so that it would heat it up and rubbish it was just okay. complete it was a market employee and then they come up every now and again they'll reinvent the wheel and they'll come up with things like they pass a radio wave and a current through at the same time as a laser but it's just it's just a market employee right okay so that's interesting that's good for people to um to know who yeah. are watching this oh, or yeah, listening yeah. Yeah, so there's a, there are different types of melanin and they've got a particular type of melanin that makes them unique and special. Yeah, so absolutely. Half my half my family are redhead actually. So my, my kind of mum's colouring, yeah. which obviously isn't pink, it's well, brown. Well. <laughs> if you can see it, you won't be able to see it in the podcast, but if you do, you will. Um, and that's made that's made me like with dark hair. So yeah, I mean we've we we've had a few clients over the years that have been insistent, you know, they've been like, oh, please, can you just try it? And I'm saying, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Please, please, we use it. I'm like, so against better judgment, I say, okay, if you want to come in and at the end of it, though, we'll have got them up the highest energy and it just, it ain't happening. It just ain't happening at all. Sometimes some of the auburn ones, though, depending on the sort of makeup balance between um the type of melanin some auburns have got enough 
of a colour in it that I've seen that take quite well. And also, let's just talk about collars and cuffs. You know, it's not everybody's hair, you know, they could have really, <laughs> they could have really, really blonde hair. And, you know, when we, we do a, an online consultation, because everything's online, because it makes life for everybody easier. Yeah. So schedule online we do your consultation online we get back to you and um but see when they walk through the door and laura and i just look at each other and think oh no they're never but often as not their underarm hair will be really really brown so yeah. it's not always the case that every area in your body is going to be the same color yeah and probably more often not actually mm -hmm. eh? so that's, cool. that's so basically, if people are interested in their, their fair hair, they need a consultation to discern. Yeah, to see. I mean, we, we do a, a free patch test anyway, and we can tell, really, the, well, the client can tell very quickly when we do the patch, they'll come back and go, look, you know, they'll get a big sort of 50 pence piece size of uh, of hair that hasn't regrown. So, um, so it's, it's really beneficial that way as well. It is really beneficial. This has already been so interesting. I feel as if I've already learned so much. <laughs> how did you, so you, you started in the IPL, as you mentioned. How, yeah. how did you get into the kind of uh, the beauty hair uh, removal uh, industry? Uh, like? Such an um, unusual journey. I, I actually started off, uh, first of all, I wanted to be a vet. Uh, and then I went along to an autopsy. And it was just, oh, that that right away I thought yeah, not it for you was not for me so I was kind of lost and then I thought right dietetics because I'm really into nutrition and um I started doing dietetics um a long long time ago um but it was more the psychology of, this, of that that interested me in the sort of sports um injury side of things that I went down after that and then I kind of fell into laser because one day they are into the, the time IPL because they were short of um, practitioners to do it. So they said, look, would you do the training? So I did. And then I left it for years and went away and did other jobs. And I used to fly uh, with the airlines. So, I mean, I've, I've had a good broad spectrum of things. Um, and then I did an advanced laser and light um, qualification and other qualifications after that so it's fascinating and i love it's just the difference it makes to somebody yeah you know, and i know we're talking about essentially for people what can be deemed as cosmetic but for so many people it's more than just a cosmetic it's a, it's to do with their self-worth and we we had a chat about this as well you know and PCOS that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later as well. It's, it's a massive, massive thing that it almost, it almost um, goes to the root, if you, if you excuse the pun, yeah. of the femininity as well. You know, it really is such, it's deemed so personal that it's stigmatized and it shouldn't be at all, you know. And I think that's the biggest thing with masks. You know, we had quite a lot of clients that come in after because they still need to wear masks when they come in. Um, and they we put all the PPE on, etc. And they take it off and they said, you know, this is going to be like the greatest showman. Have you got the music to play? Because I feel as if when I take this mask off, you know, I'm going to have a beard, you know. And um Essentially, what tends to happen is you focus on one thing. So it's like, instead of seeing a forest of beauty, you know, you're focusing on one tree that's maybe, you know, the one that is the one that you see all the time. No one else sees that. It's the same with your face as well. And to do with imperfections or what we perceive as an imperfection isn't something that MD would even notice, you know. Because they'll yeah. come in and they'll say, oh, I've got these two hairs here and everybody's staring at them. Nobody's noticed. That's why so many times, I mean, many times can you honestly, you come home, all right, maybe you've dyed it pink, but you've, you've got a hair trim or restyled. Your partner's not even, or your family, nobody's noticed. It's because to your brain switches off to something that sees all the time. So if it just, your brain automatically gets lazy it's programmed into jettison out things that it doesn't need to concentrate on. So it's 
your brain says, oh, there's Laura, and it misses the hairdo. You might even, you'll be like, oh, look at my hair. <laughs> you walk in and like, nobody's even noticed. You know, I spent two and a half hours getting this colored and cut and everything, and nobody's even noticed. You're like, can you tell it's like two shades of magenta less? You know? <laughs> <laughs> No, honestly, like I, I have to, I have to agree with you as well on the, you know, it, it's a like a beauty treatment and an aesthetic treatment, but actually, like it's like you say, it's so much more than that because being a woman who is exceptionally hairy, um, I always used to think that I had like extra testosterone or something. I know we will talk about hormones, um, but it really can affect a lot of things for some women. It can affect women going swimming. It can affect them looking forward to their holidays because they feel they need to shave twice a day. It can affect, I mean, I remember I um, I first got my moustache waxed when I was 11 before I went up to secondary school because my brother used to constantly say, you've got a total mouser and you can't take that up to the big school. And I was like, wait a minute. And I, like, I, I actually did. And my mum obviously agreed because she was like, we'll just take you and get you a wee wax um, mm. and then you'll feel good. And you know, it really was. And then that's obviously like an ongoing journey for me. So I think, yeah, what you're saying is so true. And it's important to 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 really like value yourself, self-worth and do things if you can that yeah. help that and bring it on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just self-worth. It was in the days before. It's funny, your heart by COVID had such a massive effect on us all um, in so many ways because we were designed to connect as as human beings. That connection is such an important thing. And as much as Zoom, we'll achieve a good connection here. But the connection that we would have meeting face to face is totally different because there's, there's an energy exchange. There's something just innately human about connection and a hug. Yep. You know, it, it, we we're just all fared so so well considering that we've been denied that essential need you know for a hug so so I think the main thing is we've really been deprived of connection through COVID Um, we'll get this innate need to contact with each other and more than just the level of face-to-face on a screen because that whole hug thing is something that is, is so invaluable and the one thing that really made me realize how much laser could make a difference to somebody was probably my first real, really bad PCOS client that had come in. And uh, she, you, there's no way of actually saying who this would be, but this woman's neck, what, she had more hair there than, than I've ever seen anybody with. And she held herself so her whole her shoulders were down her chin was down and this is the way she walked through her life so this is the way she interacted at work and with everything so we did the treatment and literally you could see the follicles popping jumping out of her face and you could hear them it was you know almost needed a visor on because they were flying all over the room and then she came in four weeks later, and the first thing she did was like put her, her arms around me and just gave me this massive hug. And I was like, hello. <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> we did a check through and after our session, everything's fine. Um, but it takes a few weeks for the follicles to work themselves through fully and fall okay. out. And she said, You never guess what I did last week. And I was like, no, what? She went, I went for a swim. I was like, oh, that's good. Did, did you like it? You know, did you enjoy it? And uh, I thought, okay, this is, where's this going? She said, no, you don't understand. I said, no, I obviously don't. What is it about that swim? She said, I've not been for a swim for 22 years. Oh, I was wow. too embarrassed to get in the pool because the focus for her was completely not just visually but in her mind is that the whole pool was standing around almost like an olympic swimming pool staring at her face going down so she tried it and had left years before um and her face was just unbelievable there's still here there you know it wasn't it's not a miracle wand but the difference was just 
and she was actually she sat and cried. We, oh, I, we sat and cried, and it was the most beautiful thing. I thought something that takes twenty minutes had had such a visible impact, and then her shoulders were back. She was standing differently, and it's 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 one of these things. It's priceless. You know, totally priceless. So, oh, so yeah, that's my swim. That is life changing, isn't it? Can be. And like you're saying as well, you know, about shaving twice a day and um, on holiday. But some, I've got some clients who get up at five o'clock in the morning and they will shave and then they'll apply makeup and go back to bed. So when their husband wakes up, they've got this innate sense of shame. And that's something I'll touch on with you later as well. Um, this sense of shame that she had. And then she also would get in early and she'd hid a, a wash bag behind the cistern in our um, bathroom with all her razors in it. So her husband didn't actually know and she withheld herself from him. She deprived herself of that contact. He thought it was him. So they came and started talking about it and he thought that she was pushing him away for all these years and it's because she just felt so embarrassed. So mm -hmm. there's more to it than just that cosmetic side, Laura. I had to say that. that totally. You've, you've really got the gist of that. You know? uh, 100%, 100%. So much. Right, okay. So PCOS, polycystic ovary yes. syndrome. Okay. So we've got about probably about 10... 10 to 15 percent of um, females will have some sort of PCOS. Now, polycystic ovary syndrome is normally there's three indicators normally that are there. So you've got a blood test that will see if you get high androgens in your blood. Um, your menstrual cycle will be erratic or non-existent or not. And then they'll also do a scope to check your ovaries for what they call ovarian cysts now a cyst sounds like i mean it just sounds but what it actually is are just eggs that are sort of encapsulated so it's actually not a cyst in the way that we would imagine a cyst it's actually um so many that they they actually then diagnose once you get so you could have a few but it wouldn't necessarily present itself as any major trauma that then knocks out your hormone kilter so that that's it in a nutshell there are some great charity sites out there like verity um which are through our website as well that you can get support um but essentially what you will have is massive male pattern hair growth um on things like forearms are normally a really good giveaway uh, not always um, and obviously you've then got the, your typical PCOS neck appearance um, and you'll also maybe get upper back, lower back, backs of the legs and you know you, we've all seen that that's natural anyway but these are heightened so they're thicker, they're more male tight hairs because you know okay. they've been washed with hormones so it is a big problem you can get things that will help you like diet will help you know so there's a whole load of things that you can actually do that will assist and you can get medications etc as well um, and also the other one sadly enough is hair loss so you'll find that a lot of women with PCOS will get thin in hair on their head as well so just the way that the actual hormones um, and it's dihydrotestosterone. I mean, it's like one of these big science words. Yeah. Um, and that causes the follicles themselves to thin out and to fall out more. So you'll often see um, a thinning crown running through a client that's been affected with PCOS as well. One thing you can do, obviously, is use things like shampoos etc that will actually it's almost like a little um where the follicle on it oh i have i've got the hand where it comes out there there's it's a little plug uh, and what tends to happen with a lot of guys and women as well that have got the same issues is that particular hormone will actually 
plug off the top so it impedes the, the growth of the hair so it actually almost um, suffocates the hair as well so that's why so even a lot of really good quality aromatherapy oils to stimulate like rosemary rosemary is a great one for stimulating hair growth in the, the head um, and peppermint things like that that are in conditioners will be good to get the microcirculation going um, and cleanse away those ones. I used to always talk about nioxin because um, I don't even know if it's still on the go now, but there's a whole lot of other products um, that you can get that will actually help for that loss. But when it comes to hair itself, I used to years ago bring folk in for hair about four weekly on their face, but now we kickstart them for three treatments, three weeks apart, um, because you've got to remember though you can't pluck yeah so a lot of people that have got facial hair will pluck constantly yes with the sun's in the mirror you you know you know it's, same. <laughs> the sun hits you and you're in the car and you look you know i know people have got tweezers like secreted everywhere so that my first plea to uh, our new clients is to stop plucking so because of that those say 30 hairs, 50 hairs that are plucked in a week, by the end of three weeks, they've got an extra 150 follicles. So they initially think, dear Lord, I've got worse hair than I thought. But when it comes to the laser getting at it, it just means that they're all active and all ready to get nuked. Mm -hmm. uh, and I prefer using things like nuked or zapped, you know, it's rather than treated because it's a bit stigmatization. I want our Laura and I both make people, not make people, we encourage people to feel as welcome and as open and just it's one of these things. So there's no stigma, there's no embarrassment, there's no, you know, it's easy for us to say, but that's that's our striving goal. I know, well, that's lovely. And shout out to Laura who works alongside yeah, you. She's, she's an absolute star. She's fantastic. Laura and I bumped into each other um when it actually just ended up being me that was here um and laura came to join us about five years ago and did all the advanced training and she is such a good therapist she is brilliant she's absolutely fantastic so oh that's so lovely so, enough. so what about somebody who is watching this or listening to this andrew and they are thinking about laser hair and they're thinking, right, so maybe I've got, like, I feel like I've got a moustache and I've got extra growth here. And I think that, you, I think most people know that you're meant to shave before going in for your treatment or, or the night before. So does that mm. include places like your hair, like your toes? Would that yeah. shave everywhere? Yeah, yeah. That, that's essentially the law. So the reason for that, the difference is, so the likes of IPL, because it, it's not as effective, it's relying. That's why we can do um, all skin tones. It's called the Fitzpatrick scale. So essentially it goes up to six, which is your classic um, Nigerian skin type that's really, really dark. So we get loads of clients that have got um, very, very dark skin. Um, we have got a massive... Um, collection of lovely people that come from the Asian community as well um, so their ancestry um, will have maybe rooted back there and I would say the majority of our clients if they were to have IPL it would burn their skin because the energy required from the light to get to the follicle is going to cause burning on their skin surface which okay. they don't get with laser so um, but yep, everybody has to. So with IPL, you would normally leave a little bit in the top. So it helps the energy to conduct down into the follicle itself. So you leave a little bit there and it goes. But with us, you can actually see it vaporize. So if somebody hasn't um, shaved you can we actually see the hair explode and it vaporizes and it melts onto the skin surface so that in itself can be uncomfortable and it'll stimulate a nerve so it's best with the laser because the energy level is so high 
um, to shave it off completely. But at the same time, we've also got, it's a fantastic um, little, hopefully this will pick it up, there we go. So that in itself is, uh, whoops. So this little thing, these screens are amazing actually, it picks up and everything and nothing. That <laughs> uh, basically delivers out um, minus 32 air. So it blows across the skin surface and it cools it down. And then the actual laser wand itself. Whoops. I'll do it trying to There we go, yeah. So that's a laser wand as, as well. So that basically, the two of them in conjunction allows us to move across and cool the skin as we're actually um, doing the actual follicle itself. Okay, okay. So she shave the night before what about pain expected pain because i know that that will be on a lot of ladies yeah, minds. i think and men's minds yeah i mean we've, we've got loads of um clients that you know that some that are um also transitioning as well so we've got a, a really really um loyal trans following as well so yeah. we are able to come in and get fantastic results if they have gone on to um, treatment with NHS for gender reassignment, they will get a limited amount of session, sessions on the NHS. Okay. The system, I believe, because I'm very biased, is better, you know, so that's me deflecting away from the P word. Um, I would say that it's very uncomfortable in certain areas, so like under your lip, because lip hair, um, sorry, lip skin is, is very, very thin. If okay. you think about it, it's, it's an erogenous zone, essentially. So it's the same with um, your bikini line as well. So you'll find as you move further in towards the lips, if you haven't Hollywood done, that that is very, very um, gentle, fragile skin. So the nerves are also massively more for obvious reasons you get a lot more nerves down there as well so but it's so quick like a Hollywood takes probably about oh you're in and out in 10-15 minutes so you know right so and, like, and just remind me because I should do this but my brain hasn't worked today Hollywood is everything off yeah and Brazilians, it's 10-15 minutes a little we we kind of we've got a little graph on the website so we, we sort of named them after cocktails like a woo woo and a, but essentially it's it's we we do a classic so your classic is where you would maybe do like a centimeter either side of whatever size of pants they want to wear you know yeah, uh, yeah. as long as they're not black pants because if you wear black pants and you're getting it done i will put a hole in it um, because the laser will actually put a hole in your best lace pants. Okay. You always wear white ones if you're going to come in and uh, what we do is if it is a classic, um, you just keep your underwear on and you would pull it to the side and then we you shave to the shape you want. So it's dead easy. And then we just laser up the, the area. So that's your sort of classic. Then you've got sort of more your Brazilian strap and then you've got Hollywood. Pew, and then we've got like little moustaches. I did a love heart once. Um, <laughs> I've, never done a light, I've never done a lightning bolt, but um, that's quite extreme. I'll normally, at the moment, there's there's quite a big um, trend to have Hollywoods done, but I often say to people, look, you can always have more taken off. Mm -hmm. If they want a Hollywood yeah go for it but think about it you know don't just come in and think you know I'll say to them well do you normally shave you know everything off first and see what they feel like for a month first you know yeah. or they just come in and randomly decide you know uh, take everything away and is it is it forever Andrew like how many treatments would you need to get for it to be forever is or is that a possibility yeah, it is. I mean, technically, we are not meant to say the word permanent um, because yep. if you have a baby, for example, um, you're going to have a hormone flush and back to that little baby that has its um, all its squillions and squillions of potential buds. I like to call them little buds. 
that it can reflush. So if something happens like menopause, you're going to get follicles that weren't there before suddenly sprouting out of nowhere. So we can't legislate for that. Some um, medications, mm -hmm. stress, believe it or not, stress, Laura, is, will actually change how your hair grows. So talk to us about that because you've mentioned this before. Why is that? It's, it's really, it's, the body itself is like a sort of, fine-tuned machine so when you put anything out of balance you know there's something else is going to give somewhere else so if you're depleting your resources then your body's not going to be operating optimally so it's going to flush with adrenaline it's going to have no you know it's, it's going to actually have all of these things flushing through so when you start to flush your body with that fight flight or freeze uh, constantly it has a detrimental effect on other hormonal um, systems within your body so that's why essentially stress does have a, a big part to play in it but your original question so you're normally so after a f the first session and going back to when we were talking about those little follicles and the little muscle that's Hey, I'm getting good. <laughs> You're getting better. <laughs> Great on the money. So um, the little muscle that's there that causes the pimple. What do you think would happen if we took that that hair away and the the muscle the muscle? What would happen to the muscle if the hair wasn't there? Would it be more sensitive? I don't know. I'm so, rubbish at these things. So right, okay. Um, the little, You're like yes, you are. <laughs> the little muscle. Phew, basically it's called an erector pili so basically all that means is it makes hair stand on end muscle mm -hmm. so if there's no hair to stand on end the muscle just basically goes so what that does mean is that you have smooth legs with no pimples oh really aha uh -huh. so no more chicken legs interesting so that is the biggest difference as well so for underarms we do a lot of braids as well um and obviously if they're you know doing a dance or whatever they want to wear something sleeveless or strapless so the shading the shadowing will go you get certain skin types that will have it's like a type of hyperpigmentation that will be there so you'll get discoloration you know how you'll often yep. see an area skin takes normally 28 days for a cell to move from there to there in your skin so from there to there it's about 28 days skin to remodulate to there's little things down at the bottom called melanocytes which basically cause pigment so when they pass through that's what causes the tan and yeah. um, so when they aren't being aggravated by shaving and inflammation there they basically over time start to clear out the skin and they'll fade away naturally so you'll notice one that you have no pimply bits your skin feels smoother even after one treatment so after one treatment you should start to feel the laser itself will slow the hair growth down so you'll notice that maybe even after four weeks you're like oh wait a minute i've not shaved or i've not even you're not even aware of it and two, it feels smoother. And then by the time you've got to maybe three sessions, you're already starting to notice it less and less and less. So after six sessions, you should be seeing a really dramatic difference. And it can often take between six and 12 sessions, essentially. Some people I've seen it happen in four. Um, it will confound me because it's very unusual, but it's normally, normally this industry benchmark, we would say six, but, the reality is that it will take more than that. It will take more than that. And that's only because they all grow at different phases. So if they all grew in the anagen phase and we could treat them all in the one go, so if all yep. your hair grew in sync, then we would get them all in the one go, no more yep. hair. But some are like resting, some are ready to shed. Um, so yeah, that's that means... it's a process. You've got to go over the body's natural way to be. And do you imagine this would really help with as well as ingrown hairs, ladies? Because um, ingrown hairs are absolutely agony. They're so know, painful. It is one of the biggest reasons that we get. So what happens with a follicle? Oh, I'm showing off there. I was getting better. Oops. <laughs> so what happens 
with an ingrown is when it's getting up to the skin surface, it just curls around and it will obviously stay under. And then that will cause obviously bacteria that's there to go in and inflame and cause a little pustule. And then it will also, not only that, is it will cause hyperpigmentation. The good thing is, I mean, I've actually seen some that have curled up so much that when they, they do, they spring out and they're like, it's like a little coiled, you know, you must really have... Really long as well, yeah. Oh my goodness, you know, is, am I, is it an axe monster I've got under there? You know, so... It's, um, but the good thing is with when you've got no follicle there itself, that that's not going to happen. One thing I think that excites me more than anything else when it comes down to it is how you actually shave. And that can actually, most of us shave incorrectly. Okay. Really, really a quick fix. Um, here's amazing stuff. That when you see when you see a towel shave, you know, a typical sort of Moroccan, Turkish, Arabic mm -hmm. towel shave, they're putting a hot towel on. So, right, I'm, I'll put you in the spot. What do you think the benefits, Laura, of a hot towel on your face is going to be? Apart from the fact it smells nice and lemony. I would say because would that open your pores? Okay. And would that give you a deeper shave, maybe? I don't know, would it push out the hair a wee bit more or? Well, you're, you're on the right tracks. One of the reasons why the, the hot towel shave is so beneficial is that hair is so, so readily thirsty to absorb moisture. So when you actually have a bath or a hot towel or you've moist, I use like a moisture mist, I've got this, um, it's a friend that does new skin. It's like a moisture mist and it, it okay. helps to plump up the follicles. So what I would normally do is, and any, anything like that at all is going to be beneficial. But what it does is the actual follicles plump up. Mm. So it means you're going to shave them. They're softer. They're not as hard and abrasive and they're going to cut a lot easier. So you're going to get an easier cut. So you're going to get a smoother shave by hydrating the follicle before which is why a good soak in the bath is going to help as well. The other thing that will help as well is if you have a very gentle exfoliate before, it's going to take the skin that's off. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what your razor looks like when you've been shaved now, but I imagine you exfoliate quite a lot, Laura. <laughs> you would imagine wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's the wee, the wee um, coming out in me. Uh, <laughs> most of us do. I mean, the last time I... I probably quite unusual I do quite a lot of these things but um when you're going to even just a quick loofah or something like that just to take off um not just in that's going to strip the skin but something that's going to take off the surface layers um will give you a much much better shave so if you're going to shave a gentle exfoliate means that when you're going to actually take the razor off um it won't clog you'll get a cleaner shave because the oil especially oil oiler areas um, won't clog up your blades so you're going to get a better cut as well and the most important one is to shave with the grain that's the so biggest shave down so in your legs or it might be up but it might be up depending on what we because not everybody's most most female legs tend to grow down the way unless you get to the back of the thigh they can sometimes go swirly yeah yeah or up the way or down you know so if you always aim to go for with that what happens when you've got so when you've got many blades in your razor or well, about maybe five okay so your first one is making connection it's lifting the follicle up second one's lifting it a bit more and then when it cuts it what happens with a lot of them is they'll retract right down and then there's more chance of it closing over and getting ingrown because it's gonna it's been pulled out too far and it retracts too much. So it's going way back into the skin. You're going to get a smoother feeling because you've it's gone right in. It's like what it's it's hiding. It's like don't do that again. Anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's crawling back into the skin. Um and a lot often you'll get a little bit of bleeding as well and trauma when you've actually shaved against the grain. That's when you're more likely to get a um, especially with 
guys as well and you know you're going to get a razor rash there mm -hmm. too because you've pulled them up too far um so if you're going to get a good shave if you want to do a really close shave you shave down so say all your leg hairs are grown down the way so you would shave down mm -hmm. and then if you want to rinse that off you bit lather up and then shave across and you'll get a really interesting good this is like you're like the, the hair expert oh, <laughs> so. hair in general here's how you yeah, do it's all part of it you know it's all part of you know mm -hmm. skin care as well and then after it as well the, the main thing you're really looking to do is just a, a cool it doesn't need to be cold you don't need to do like any of the plunge pools you know all, all this cold water swimming you don't need to yeah. go for a swim in the Clyde but um, just close over your pores um, with like, a cool, a, a cold if you can bear it, but just a quick, even if you do a bath, just like a quick one and it'll help to um, close your pores over naturally without anything getting in them. Last one, when you clean your razor, get some of your hands back, your antibiotic. Let's face it, most of us now have got gallons of this stuff. We, we yeah. Get for all our clients especially when they're from glasgow girls club oh love it lovely so if you get a little bit of that whoops mm -hmm. i've learned i'm learning how to do this um see if you put a little bit on your razor and let it stand to dry that will kill any bacteria that are actually on the surface of the blade and it means also when that evaporates off what happens with razors is that you'll get wee nicks that will form and that's when it corrodes slightly. So it means your razor is going to last you longer. So you're going to get better value out of it by just putting a little bit of alcohol gel on. And that means that your razor, when you go to shave next time, is going to be super sharp and it's not had a chance to get raggedy. So that's another one to do as well. Wow. Wow. That was so so insightful i feel like this has been you remembered all that <laughs> this has been an absolute podcast of learnings so it has <laughs> um yes okay well that's good tips yeah. for anyone who's considering laser but is still shaving that's yeah, how yeah. you're you still need to shave the good thing is with lasers that you will shave less yeah so the the main thing that you'll notice is that it slows right down so you will get the benefit quite quickly on you know you're not waiting till six months down the line suddenly you go oh my god I've got a Hollywood you know it's gonna it's like a gradual so you get the wee moments uh whoa you know look what I've got left <laughs> yeah. good uh, I mean we do there's no part of your body that can't be lasered there's bits that we won't do um so we can laser any here um we do quite a lot of blokes as well backs is it's not who normally refers the guys to get you will you'll guess this right away who refers the guys to get their backs done their their partners <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> that, it's not like a good christmas gift you normally get a big in and blocks <laughs> after christmas uh but the i mean there's there's actually also medical reasons as well like in between your cheeks as well at the back blokes get ingrowns and that is really really painful so in between bum cheeks so see just where the, the very bottom of your spine goes um it's like a cyst that actually grows in between so actually they need to incise it and it leaves a hole i mean it's agony mm -hmm. so we've got quite a lot of blokes that we'll do that for and for hygiene reasons as well if they are particularly hairy um you know and and women too you know we'll do we'll, we'll literally do right the way round um perianal and then round in the cheek as well so the actual um bottom bit is is literally smooth um See, that's amazing because like there will be like obviously men probably 100% but for women as well when they go and get their wax women will get depending on the type of wax you know treatment you're getting you will get in between your bum cheeks wax mm -hmm. so and that's you don't want hair like especially like I know that it probably is slightly more common in guys to see it but women don't we don't really want hair I mean there's certain areas that you don't want hair and that yeah. is one of them so yeah. That's good oh, to know. We do, we do that a lot. Um, so yeah, the, the main two areas are really, I mean, we can do above the eyebrow, but anything under this, what's called an orbital rim, 
anywhere there it's too near the eye so yeah. we, can't, we can't like shape there and we we simply won't do we'll do like sideburns so we do quite a lot of um shaping as well mm -hmm. um and necks are beautiful oh, necks are just gorgeous see when you see um somebody with a really god this is a pain in the ass isn't it? <laughs> your lovely backdrop aha there you go so um they are it's because i'm back to front um so you know how when you've got somebody that wears their hair up mm -hmm. so they'll wear it up and then i've got all the wispy bits which looks really good but then it's what we would normally call a dirty neck you know it just i've looks... got hundreds of neck hair so like i know exactly what you're talking about like right. yes so see yeah, when i was yeah. at school people used to go like that to me because i had such like a hairy a hairy like hairy neck bit at the back so that's good to know like when you know when you're doing your hair and you're you're catching it in the mirror and you're aware it's there yeah so and there's loads we've got loads of clients who do that with um oh, see, peaks as well with that type of neck here as well andrew there's there's no clip that keeps it up no because it's so, all too, it's not long enough and it's too fine as well yeah. almost so you'll maybe tie your hair because i very often do time my hair right up on top like a pineapple yeah and there's just nothing that keeps you these can. up. no and you can't gel it you can't i mean there's just it's just there yeah. so what we tend to do is we'll go in and we'll get we'll, we'll decide on a shape we'll show them in the mirror so that they've actually angled it round to see um and then i make them normally make them live with it for a week because i don't do anything that's not kind of informed consent you know so i won't i won't inflict what I decide or what I think yeah. would look good because it's too easy when you come into a treatment room um to you know to end up with you know too much filler and the sign of a good aesthetic nurse as well or doctors to say no you know yes. so I've had some people have come in and said look can you do that and I'm like no. especially when it comes to reshaping their face so we've got quite a lot of clients that maybe got a you know a lot going on and they'll want their face sort of tidied up as you were like you have normally have it threaded mm -hmm. so what i would say to them first is go and thread it get it threaded first to the way you want it and then once you've lived with that and seen the reaction of people mm -hmm. so that when you get your laser you've ready you're ready your image of yourself yeah you're happy with and you've had time to adjust rather than is doing something like that because threading is just going to go back but once we start the laser process so we're, we're always very mindful of, of just saying hold on a minute yeah oh absolutely right okay so in some of the laser treatment then for someone who's considering it in terms of um we things that they might not be able to so what about things like tan skin and fake tan because we glasgow girls and glasgow guys we love a fake tan don't we so what about things like that like is there any contraindications yeah. that you would just feel like it so work on? sunbeds um at the moment you're really not meant to have saunas sunbeds anything like that not that we've got any chance i just long to sit in a steam room have a swim and sit and warm up before i go home yeah it's just not happening just now though but it'll come so you can't go to the gym not that it's an excuse to put off going to the gym so you can't go and have really strange if you've just as your face lasered or your back you're not going to go out and do something hot and sweaty contraindication wise pregnancy yep and obviously you're pregnant not that it's unsafe but who wants to submit them their self and they're unborn to a clinical trial to see if it is safe so yeah, that's why exactly. it's obviously yep. not been done um but for tans we would normally suggest getting a brand that has got a really good exfoliating product with it you know how you can get the ones that you put on then you've got the the one that will um take it off again yep there's quite a few in the market uh that you'll get because it's actually so um no because <laughs> your your tan's only really going down to about there so it's only going that top layer so you can get away with a really good exfoliate um and if there's bits in between with somebody last night that came in um toothpaste and things like that that's going to take off but you we won't we can't and we, we just won't do it if it's yeah. really really heavy if you've come in for a fake tan 
the, you're not doing yourself any favours because it's going to scorch your skin because the laser is going to be attracted at the wrong level. So it's going to leave little laser kisses all the way down your leg. Yeah. Um, fake tan in itself will come off quite easily. Mm -hmm. An actual tan itself, normally after a few weeks, you're okay. We have clients that we will discuss with their tanning routine. Can I yep. leave it at that? Yes, absolutely. That's fine. Well, it's okay. possible, but we will discuss with them about um, timings. Yes. Okay. No, that's good to know. And because these are things that you wouldn't think about before, mm -hmm. before going. So you've also mentioned another interesting fact. We are white underwear. Yeah, yeah. Um, so because the laser itself is attracted to um, anything that's dark, like anything that's black. We, I, I do laser training for, we, the company we've got is called Polaris. Um, it's a, a fantastic machine. Um, and I used to, before <laughs> health and safety went a bit mental, um, you can actually hold the laser up and lasers collimated light so basically it'll go that's why you can get laser pointers that go up to the aircraft it will just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going whereas ipl tends to diffuse so it'll be like a mm -hmm. light so it'll disappear so if it's something black from the other side of the room it will actually attract onto it and i could actually set things on fire from inside of the room All right. That's why it's so important to go to someone who's fully trained. <laughs> so you've also got to wear, uh, these are the sort of sexy laser goggles that uh, okay. I wear as well. So nice. Nice and green. So. Lovely, lovely. Okay, lovely. great. Right, okay. So shave the night before. Yeah. Shave the night before. Um, your treatment can take anywhere, like it can take up to two and a half hours yeah, if you're well, getting lots done. An, under, an underarm, I'll have an underarm done in about five minutes, six minutes. Most of the time, my bikini or underarm is spent, you know, how are you doing this week? You know, what are you been up yeah. to? Um, so, yeah. Okay, and then it's done. Right, okay, brilliant. You can, what was the other? So in terms of pain thresholds, some areas will be sore and other yeah. dependent on the skin yeah. type. I'm uncomfortable. We, you know, we tend to, we'll judge with people. A lot of the places you won't feel it on the legs, you often won't feel anything at all. So like your glutes, like your bum cheeks, you won't feel anything. Your perianal, I mean, you're going to feel it on your perianal area because, and your bikini because the you know it's as i said an erogenous zone mm -hmm. you'll feel it a little bit in your chin underarm and inner thigh like when you've got a lymph node underneath it kind of can feel a wee bit magnetic -y. but it's over compared to wax and it's just it's nothing like it i've had, I've had wax once for charity and i will never ever i take my hat off to every single woman that waxes Oh, I know. I so die. So die. It's it's I've yeah. Never felt anything like it in my life. Honestly, I I go to my cousin so that I can bite down on a towel and scream. <laughs> and then there's like it's my cousin, it's fine. Okay, right, brilliant. Now obviously Metro Laser are a partner of the GGC and GGC website members get access to some really amazing deals with you, including a first treatment totally free. Yeah. So we will give a, we like to take away the sort of anticipation. So you get your patch test. So the link that's through from the, the, the actual app itself um, will give you enhanced benefits as well. So you will see that on the app. Um, or if you're not yet um, a member, then you can also access the link as well, which will give you a free patch and uh, your free first treatment. So that's on the lip or chin, underarm or a classic bikini you know you're not going to come in and say um i'll, I'll just have my whole body done so you know there are, <laughs> there are limits on it oh there's t's with, with everything there's t's and c's but members can log on to the website or the app and figure and find out the, the different levels um, yeah. of offers which is fab and in this very magazine which we are filming this um this interview for we're going to be running, you are going to be running an absolutely amazing competition. So tell us a wee bit about that. We've got a £500 giveaway. So 
that in itself will get you six sessions of laser for yourself. So that would do, um, say, lower legs, bikini, underarm. So you've got six of them to use. Um, and then you've also got five, five, four, five forty pound gift vouchers to give to friends. So you've got, so it means that they could um, use that against an offer. We've got some offers coming up for um, GGC members. So we've got an underarm one coming up that will be for around about 49, 59 pounds. So they would be able to, with those vouchers, get um, six underarm treatments. So that's for, for um, five friends as well. And we've also got uh, 150 pounds pamper package. So that's lovely flowers, uh, some fantastic skincare products, um, and a whole lot of other goodies as well. So. What an amazing competition. And to, to find out how to enter, just maybe look at this page or this page, depending, <laughs> yeah. on, what, depending on what side the, uh, the, the interview's on. So thank you for that. That's absolutely brilliant. And a final question, Eliza, you had mentioned six to 12 sessions to really basically not be shaven thereafter is that right and would you need to do like a yearly top up or yeah i mean like some people will maybe get three years and then they'll maybe have three years four years come back so the majority of people will once they've gone through the the treatment they'll have no hair you know they'll they'll come back maybe for a brush up treatment maybe once a year and it's 20 minutes so yeah lower legs i did some brush-ups the other day and it's quite nice now because we've been at it for so long because at first this was all kind of i was taking this based on the manufacturer and, and the, the other clinics around the uk you know what they'd found so i was saying well at other clinics this is what we find now i can actually because we've been doing it for so long well we've had somebody that's come back for you know after four years and now they've got so it's nice to actually have that ability to say for yourself yeah i've got xyz you know clients that are doing it so yeah you're you know we top up the likes of pcos which we spoke of because that is an ongoing one it's more of a maintenance thing with pcos because the hormones will keep activating follicles that are dormant so you're really you're really just sort of constantly fighting against these follicles some people it does go for a long long time you know they'll maybe get six weeks of no growth really at all and for somebody that can make a massive difference before yeah. they start to feel so they know that you know 39 40 quids normally for the full face that they're, they're, they're getting a full session or less because it doesn't often have to be a whole face yeah amazing okay brilliant right well that was some fab facts there i feel like anyone listening will have learned a lot so i just wanted to say a big thank you andrew for joining us today and actually giving us some amazing facts on hair facts on fuzz <laughs> you are the man with the facts and the fuzz <laughs> it's been a real that's education that's good i've really enjoyed the afternoon as well thank you not at all. And we mentioned there, there's some amazing offers for GGC website members. And I guess if anyone's got more questions following this, they can contact you direct. Of course, yeah. Just um, info at Metro Clinic. Um, just follow the links through from um, their app or from um, the magazine as well. Be delighted. Any questions might seem obscure to you, but the chances are we have heard it before. So anything at all brilliant okay well thank you we'll speak to you again andrew all right thanks laura bye